Pros in the wild, David Lee and Chaz. Man, you guys always pull deep lost, long long lost memories from the subconscious. You should charge more for your therapy sessions. I was listening to your Jimbo Pros in the wild stories and was cracking up about that guy meeting him in the internet cafe in Bali. So my <laughs> story is also in Bali, but during winter when pla- when places that are not so well known are cooking without the dry season crowds. So there I was with two, uh, my surf traveling companions, one salty, salty old dog from NZ and our young accomplice from Kona side, big Island. We were the only three dudes in a boat getting ready to depart from the beach. When the, this board comes hurling into the boat at our feet, it was this mayhem. It looked to be about six ten and was a massive five inches thick with a fish outline, six ten fish. We look at the board, look at each other, then instinctively turn around to see who threw the board in. Jimbo. He says, hey, brah, grab my board, yeah, in his best howly pigeon. He then proceeds to climb over the gunwale of the boat and slithers on like a walrus, minus the grace. His companion is a small dude with a bodyboard. Jimbo looks at all of us, then he focuses in on my friend from Kona, and he goes, hey, where are you from? My friend says Kona, to which Jimbo responds, yeah, bro, I thought you looked familiar. Just like the dude in the internet cafe story, this guy speaks so loudly and obnoxiously that it's comical. Anyways, the boat guys are jabbering back and forth with wide-eyed amazement at this big dude going surfing. This is probably a couple years after that famous Lost video, and he's had quite a few Nazi garangs since then, if you know what I mean. He is not small. Uh, so we cruise out to the channel, cruise out the channel into the water, out to the outer reef, and it's big. There's no one in the lineup, so it's hard to gauge, but we had already surfed a little bit earlier, so we know exactly what to expect. But we pulled up during a lull, and Jimbo doesn't take any time to assess the situation. He and the bo- booger just throw immediately throw their boards overboard and then dive in without their leashes attached. When Jumbo jumps off the side of the boat, the whole boat starts healing from his weight. The the boat guys are laughing in amazement, and it's not a small boat. It's probably a 20-foot Boston-style whaler. Anyway, we look up, and this huge set is approaching. The captain sees it, so he nails the throttle, and we crash over a couple of waves that are in the the 15- to 18-foot range. We look back to see Jimbo dog paddling towards his board as fast as possible, but it's about 20 meters away from him. There's no chance in hell that he's going to get to this board before this huge white water does. Sure enough, a six wave set sweeps both of their boards into oblivion. Another set goes by and then we see Jimbo and his companion have also been dispatched for a long, long swim through the lagoon and to the beach. My friends and I were the only ones out surfing for the entire afternoon, howling and cackling after that encounter. There was prob this was probably 16 years ago. And anytime we meet up for a surf and we throw our boards in the car, one of us will inevitably say, Hey bro, grab my board. Yeah. Classic. Sincerely, Scott. Absolutely love it. That is so funny. That is very, very, very funny, which Pros in the Wild segment is great. Of course, we've talked about it. Uh, like, you know, the the Currens and the, which the whole thing, didn't the whole thing start with basically Curran in the Wild? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, now it's so, Jimbo and John Peck in the Wild. I mean, which is the funny thing, right? It's gotten more funny. I think the more obscure the surf personality has gotten, the funnier the stories get of, I mean, they're all great. Uh, and, you know, the ones of the big names are great too. But it's the, the Jimbo stories. <laughs> or the peck stories are properly, properly, like genuinely funny. I'm getting to know Jimbo. You know what I mean? Like week after yeah. week, I didn't, I've never met him in my life. I've seen a couple video clips of him and now I feel like I'm getting to know him. You have a sense of who Jimbo Pellegrin is. Uh, other funny note about that story, I guess semi-related, is the surfer joy at seeing another surfer, a fellow surfer. And you can love this surfer. You can... This surfer can be your best friend cheering for the wave, the whitewash to get the board and take it away over the guy swimming and getting it. It's like, is every, have you ever cheered for a dude to get his board before the set cleaned it up? 
Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. I mean, well, the the beauty about that story building as he wrote the email was Jimbo being the obnoxious douche. Like we're all sitting here, you know, in the boat ready to go surf. And then a board hits our feet. And then the guy jumps in and he's, you know, obnoxiously loud in his delivery and he's just a sight to see and he's dominating the whole situation. So that already dictates some some element of tension in the storyline. So then for him to have the hubris to show up in a brand new lineup and not assess anything, but just think, oh, I'm going out, I'm paddling out. I'm going to be the first one out, in fact, and then get dealt uh, the hand by mother nature, like I described, described earlier. It is a metaphor for life. Be that douche and mother nature will check you. Jimbo Pellegrini learned that day that life gives you licks. It'll take your arm even at some point, but you just keep on ticking. Well, this is what I'm learning about Jimbo week after week is that he never learned the lesson. <laughs> or, Eventually life took his arm, you know, sure. and, and maybe he learned it then. We don't know because we haven't heard a, we need a story from post. A modern arm. Jimbo. A modern, yeah. But also what if Jimbo lo just learned, what if Jimbo's life lesson is I can survive anything? Which Jimbo could have rolled through the lagoon, got straight urchined up and come out thinking, well, guess who survived jimbo he is really putting mother nature like to yeah. her limits which, you know? which is like what better character to put mother like to face off let's to sumo wrestle mother nature <laughs> he had i mean he's pushing her right to the edge of that tiny little circle and her foot is like creeping out i had a battle with my two-year-old this morning with austin we got a new babysitter we're trying out and he's trying to win this battle. Yeah, you know? yeah. And so 30 minutes before we recorded this, he was like going full meltdown mode. Like, and I was ready to lose. I was ready yeah. to give him everything that he asked for just so that he would shut the hell up. And it was like 30 minutes of nonstop. I needed the 30 minutes in between to decompress before pushing record with you. And that is mother nature right now. It is totally mother nature. Like Jimbo has dealt her such a harsh blow that that's probably why we haven't heard. Well, we need a Jimbo in the wild story, but we probably haven't heard just because mother nature is panting on the sidelines while Jimbo is just str strutting around the ring. That's what, that's how COVID happened. He pushed her to her <laughs> limits and it, it birthed COVID. Um, the video that came up when we asked like, Hey, has anybody heard from Jimbo, you know, since he lost his arm or recent updates or anything like that. So then the video pops up of him going on a racist tirade, yeah. um, with a clerk at a gas station. I don't know if you ever read the comments of that video, but somebody points out that as he's exiting the door, you notice shit stain on his pants. <laughs> well, in that case, <laughs> Maybe Mother Nature won at the end. No, Mother Nature hasn't won yet. But the point is, he's also panting on the sideline. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. he's been pushed to his limit where he doesn't have clean pants on or doesn't have access to clean pants. <laughs> Maybe he's unaware that his pants aren't clean. But like they are really, really pushing each other. There is yeah. global warming <laughs> happening on one end and he's missing an arm, sweating with a shit stain on his pants on the other end in middle America, far from his six ten, five inch thick fish. They've each had better days, let's put it that way. <laughs>